you're gonna see something out here that's so unique because it's like, really, they went inside a prison to play basketball? Did anybody get stabbed? Did anybody get something done to him? No, none of that's happening here at San Quentin. The moment they step on the court, all that other stuff goes out the window. It's basketball. Jack that thing up, feed the ball over the half man, half amazing. He's looking at Kyle like he's fresh meat. At least they get that out of here. Dan over feed the back over Dan. Dan fires that up in the face. That was in the face. A deep three point exfoliation by Dan on the green team. Oh my God, I watched sports ball with that. Welcome back, everybody. That was a clip from Q Ball, a documentary on basketball players at San Quentin Prison in Northern California. The documentary features this man, Aaron Showtime Taylor, the play by play announcer. Aaron served 26 years in prison, but as you can see from the clip, his skills behind the mic are incredible. Um, and they actually caught the attention of the Golden State Warriors. After Aaron's release last year, they invited him to be a guest PA where he hugs Stephen Curry. Which which is awesome. He's the sweetest guy. Here to talk about it, please welcome Aaron Showtime Taylor, everybody. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm really only go to sports ball events for like the food and beverage. Right. Um, I like playing sports, but I don't like watching them as much, but I would totally watch if you were doing that the whole time. You're amazing at it. Um, it took a lot of practice to get there. Oh my gosh. Well, that it must have been a surreal moment to like, after all of that. 26 years in getting out, doing the Warriors game, beating Stefan. Like, was that a really crazy moment that you ever thought would happen? Well, you always want to keep your hope and your dreams alive, and you want to keep yourself rooted in faith. So I always had a vision that, that it would happen, yeah. but when it did happen, like I used there on, uh, on the uh, camera, it was definitely surreal, yeah. the whole process. And uh, to even have him step back and say, here, man, you take, the, uh, you take this, this, this post-game interview. You know, that was that was real deep. Wow. That was so cool. And I love that. You, everybody needs to continually dream big. I, I agree with that. Um, well, let's talk about how you ended up in prison. Because do you mind sharing what happened? No, no, okay. I, don't, I okay. don't mind. Back in 1994, you know, I had some issues with drugs and uh, a failed relationship. And uh, I found a gun in my hand, you know, something that I was used to in the past. Mm -hmm. And I went in and I tried to rob a furniture store and I was shot in the face and taken to jail. Um, while I was in prison, though, I had an opportunity based on the places that I went to to address some of the childhood traumas that I had dealt with, mm -hmm. right, well, actually that I hadn't dealt with. And to be able to get into some rehabilitative groups, right, and also to tap into my own spiritual uh, teachings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so around 2007, 2008, I really got deeply involved in both of them at the same time while I was involved with basketball as well. Mm -hmm. And I was doing play by play on the yard for people. And so it really helped in my healing process, right? To mature myself into the person that I became to today. I, you know, I couldn't agree with that more because I feel like I was a completely different person before singing was my outlet. And I, and I found that, and it really helped me develop my confidence, my personality, and kind of who I felt like I was meant to be right. and like my purpose. Like what, how did you end up doing it? Like the first game you called? <laughs> so the first game I tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love tried. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do. I was trying to imitate Chick Hearn, right? Okay, okay. I failed terribly. And then when I went to the county jail after I was arrested, I used to stand on the side of the court and make calls, yeah. right? And then when I went to state prison, I got underneath the basketball court. So I have a vision like this right, and I can see the whole court. And so now I'm calling people by NBA names, and now, like you said, the energy raises up. So there was a, uh, people had to get used to it. Yeah. And, and it turned out to be a really, really good thing. That's amazing. So, um, well, earlier this month, um, the Golden State Warriors invited Aaron to be the guest public announcer. Following the game, Stephen Curry presented Aaron with the game ball. So you got choked up. Anyone would get choked up. But, I mean, wh what did you feel in that moment? Like, how, how cool and how big was that for you? Well, I understood that going into the Chase Center and having this spotlight put on me was going to be life-changing for me, but I didn't want it to be totally about me. Yeah. I wanted it to be about something bigger than me. You know, I wanted it to be about a message that I wanted to send out to people that not just you can do 26 years and come out and improve yourself, but you can do whatever amount of time you do and start to think big mm -hmm. about yourself. Open your heart up for love for, for other people. Wow. 
Um, well, there's there's someone in particular who made a, a huge difference for you. Yeah. So can you tell us about him? So before I went to San Quentin, uh, I met a guy at Calipatra State Prison in 2002. His name is Tobias Tubbs. Uh, Tobias gave me a vision of spirituality that I'd never seen before. You know, everything was always about who's right and who's wrong. But when I met Tobias, it was about who do you love? How much love can you pull up out of your heart for somebody else? Can you love yourself? Right? And then love somebody else naturally and purely after that. Right? And so that was completely radical to me. I'd never heard of anything like that. But thanks to Tobias, he's part of the reason also that I became the person that I am today that you're talking to. Wow. Well, Tobias is actually here. Now I want to bring in Tobias, a man who Aaron says helped turn his life around. So welcome to the show, Tobias. We love having you here. Um, so you were both in prison together, he was telling us. So what struck you about Aaron? First of all, thank you for giving us uh, this humbling opportunity. This means a lot, uh, not only for us, as he said, but the hundreds of thousands of people sitting on bunks right now waiting to turn on your show and they see us yeah that breeds uh births a lot of hope especially right now but uh, i personally went to uh to prison at the age of 20 for uh a crime i didn't commit uh it was a murder up out of compton and they gave me a death sentence mm. and uh under the super predator narrative and i vowed myself that I'm not gonna allow that to define me in that moment, that I'll just be defined by that one moment at my life at an adolescent. Fast forwarding to 2002, like you said, I'm 32 years old. I've dealt with probably hundreds to maybe a few thousand men at that point. And our whole thing was about investing in good. We're coming from positions of being broken. We're coming from positions of trauma. We're coming from positions of shame and lack on generational levels. And so when I seen Aaron with his fists all balled up and <laughs> agitated and upset and, you know, telling people a piece of his mind, uh, I said, if he can get past that pain, if he can get past that bitterness, uh, then that light can come out of him. And so all, all I did and a few other brothers who supported that endeavor of giving men an opportunity to love, to be loved, to express themselves, uh, we gave that to him, and the better parts of his humanity came forth as we're now recognizing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I have to ask, at the beginning of that, did, did you say that you didn't commit the murder? Right? So I know. This is, this is my question. Yes. Because that's hitting me. You're, you're such a, a sweet, sincere, like, you know, all the things you're saying. I'm like, how was there a time before this that you... I mean, resentment, bitterness, anger, rage. Like, I, I would have experienced all of those personally, having had that happen to me. I mean, how, what, made, what made you flip the script? Like, what, what happened with you? I had to make a conscious decision. And uh, I offer this to the guys all the time. We're not held accountable to what happens to us. All I can be responsible for is how I feel. And I'm not going to allow resentment. I'm not going to allow distrust because mm. that will kill you in there. I see why young people pick up knives and fight and go through all we go because we're coming from points of distrust. We're coming from points of hurt. And being despair. Despair. Yeah. And so I made a conscious decision. I know, as Maya Angelou says, if you speak from the heart, you can touch hearts. And so that's what I went to the yard doing. And that's what brought people together. But on a greater extent, it was basketball. Because you asked me, how did I do it? Uh, I prayed to God, but I took my frustrations out on the court. Because I was a pro and basketball player. I became a celebrity on the court. And then I used that celebrity to call people to the chapel. And then it got so big, then I had to use the gym. Yeah. So the connection with him taking it to the next level and going to Centinella State Prison, San Quentin, cue ball taken to the Warriors, and now we're on the... <laughs> oh, you feel me? So, <laughs> so you, since this is what happens when we come out of our cells, drop out of our heads into our hearts, yeah. 
and jump into that human capacity to love on bold levels. Definitely. Yeah. This is not just loving, but this is on bold levels. Definitely. And so uh, I thank you and we're humbled. God, you are, I could listen to you all day. I can see why you needed the gym. I am like, oh, look, I haven't been to service in a minute. And I was like, wow, this is, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I, cannot, I can only imagine what, you know, I, I see what you've done, but what you're going to do, it's, it's amazing. I mean, is there anything you want to say to this man? Like, that the domino effect that occurred because of this man is amazing. And imagine all the other, all the lives. Tobias. I don't, I don't even think I know how to form the words on this because you saw in me something that nobody else saw. And you decided to invest in me. And nobody had invested in me before. And so just for that, man, just thank you. Just thank you, you know, for the sake of God and for the sake of the people that you saw in me something that nobody else saw and you decided to invest love, wisdom, knowledge inside of me and then... You got to remember, me and this guy was only together on the yard together maybe eight months. The majority of our development was 17 years of writing letters back and forth to each other. Wow. So a lot of the things why I'm sitting here, right, outside of basketball is because of you, man. And I wanted to tell you thank you for that, brother. Uh, brother, you know. uh, it touches my heart because when you're speaking, other people, only God knows the number. Thank you all for giving me a chance. Because without y'all, brother, I wouldn't have made it up out of there. So. I'm going to tell you one thing, right? I'm Just one regret. Now, while we were at Calipatra State Prison, I heard about Shaq on the basketball court, Tobias. Oh. Right? But I never actually had the opportunity to do play-by-play. -play. Oh, well, that seems like that hasn't happened. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he's 25 years too late? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I would still watch that game. <laughs> um, well, you guys, um, I just love your spirit. I love your energy. I love your message. I think this is so important. Um, and I think that you are so important. Like, imagine what you're supposed to do with the rest of your lives. Yet has yet to even happen. Well, we need to take a break. Thank you so much, Tobias. Thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us. These stories are so important. So thank you so much for being here. Yep, I'm still here. Just waiting for you to subscribe. If you don't, I'll be trapped in this box forever. Ah.